Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a simple Hilo game for PC and mobile in Unity and welcome to episode 5. In this tutorial we're going to create a script which keeps track of all our statistics and we're also going to make one of these buttons work, at least the high button. Don't forget, click subscribe and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you learn things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now, we have one script that basically just deals the card. And you can see I am currently in play mode, but these buttons don't work. So we at least want to get this high button working. But in order for that to happen, we actually need to have a script which controls the flow of the cards and what is currently on the board. So for example, if we dealt card number four, we would need to store that somewhere else so we can compare if the next card is higher or lower depending on our choice. So we're gonna create a new script. So down here, let's click on create and C sharp script. And this one will be card control. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. We've opened the other script up there. There we go. So just like the last one, this is how it looks by default. Now, there are a couple of things that we do need to mention here. Firstly, we need to have a variable which keeps track of, like I say, that dealt card, but we need to declare that variable slightly differently. So other scripts need to talk to this script to tell it what the cards being dealt are, whether we've chosen high or low. And when we declare these variables, we need to set them as static. That way, the, any number we pass to this script can be read. So let's get rid of the annotations because we don't need them. Let's delete them out. And let's start by going public, static. Remember, capitalization is massively important. So like I say, the word static will enable us to pass uh, different variable types to this script. It's still going to be an integer, and it's going to be dealt card number. So what we'll do is we will pass whatever number we have dealt to that first stack to this script as well. Because like I say, this script is going to be the one that compares what's going on. So on the flip side of that, we also need the new card number as well. So public static int and we'll all, what should we call this one? Let, let's just have this one new card number. Eventually, we'll also have to pass that card over to the dealt stack if we get it right, because then we need to carry on the sequence. But don't worry about the sequence just for now, as long as we get the main mechanics working. So while we're here, because we have this new dealt card number variable in place, let's save that. And let's go to our original deal card script. And what we'll do is when we have dealt the card, we then need to go on a new line below and say, card control, you see it right there, it's highlighted in a light blue, dot dealt card number, and you can see it there in the list, and we'll make it equal to card generate with a semicolon. So now, at this point, once we've dealt the card, we see it on the screen, we've hidden the deal button and we've unhidden the high low button. This now passes whatever card number we've dealt to this script. So at this point, this variable will be equal to example four if we've dealt with card number four. So let's save that and save deal card for now. And let's head back into Unity. So remember the settings object that we had from the last tutorial. We just need to drag and drop card control onto it now up there. And you won't see anything appear. Now, I must point out here that if we have a static variable in our script, it will not appear in the inspector panel. Don't worry about that at all. It will still work as intended. So we've dealt the card. We have that number. Now let's get that high button working. So let's have another script for that high button. So right click, create, C sharp script, high button. And let's open that in Visual Studio. There we go. 
So this is going to function similar to how deal card works, but in a slightly different manner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy from deal card those variables and the public void deal my new card. So I'm going to take all of that, copy and place it in place of those methods and the annotations. Now, the reason I'm doing this is simply because rather than retype everything out, there's no point. We may as well copy what we've already written and just modify what we need to. So here, once again, we have public game object dealt card. We're going to keep that as it is. Same with the card generate. Now, we don't actually need these buttons right now. We may do later on, depending on how we approach the reset process. But for now, we can get rid of those three variables, which also means we can get rid of these three lines of code down here. Now, next thing we need to change is this section here. So card control dot delt card number equals card generate, right? So card control, we also have new card number. So this is the new card that we are dealing. So if we think it's high, then we're dealing high. So we say card control dot new card number equals card generate. So at this point, if we save this script, now once we've clicked high, this will have all the information it needs to decide whether we have uh, got that right, whether it is indeed high. Now, there is one question to ask at this point. If we draw the same card, do we win? I am going to go with yes. So if we've got, let's say, a four on the board and we say higher and another four comes out, then we have won. So I'm going to use annotations just to make sure in this script we know what happens. So let's have a double slash here and we will say that equal number equals winner. Now, if you don't want that later on, when we kind of work out that script to do the math, I will tell you what you need to change. The reason I'm going to keep it like this is we are doing this simply because this is only one deck of cards. But if you were to do this with four deck of cards, then for example, the number four, there are other number fours in there. So let's save that script. Now let's make sure what we've done so far actually works. So we need to drag and drop high button onto settings. And in there, we need to go to dealt card and we have to have this the same as the original deal card script, which is 15. So if we set the size to 15, and remember, we ignore zero and one. Now we need to go to turn card deck and apply all of those variables one by one to each slot. So hopefully you should be able to see what we've done here. What we're doing is we are duplicating the process, but in a different way, which gives us much more ease and allows us to kind of control what's going on a lot better. There's no point writing tons and tons of lines of code when something like this can be done a lot easier. So once you've drag and dropped all of those into each section, we just need to make sure that the high button is indeed working. So let's go to high button. And much like we did with the deal button, we click on plus and we drag and drop settings into non object here and no function lights up. We go to the drop down list. We'll go to high button and we will go to, in fact, before we do that, what I would like to do is actually change this rather than have deal my new card. Let's have this as deal high card. I think that's probably a little bit more sensible given what we're doing here. So deal high card, wait for it to recompile in Unity. And let's do that once again. So we've got settings in there, no function. Let's go to high button and then we'll have deal high card. So let's set that there. And obviously there's much more to this. We need to restrict what's going on. We'll have some UI appear on screen, but that will all come when we put together how this is all working. So let's press play and see how this works. So deal card, we have a jack. Let's try and go high. And we did indeed get a higher card.
Now, once again, we have the error of if we keep pressing this, you can see all of these lighting up because we're still dealing with the high card here. So there is a process of what we need to do at any given point. But for now, we have all of that working. So the same principle can be applied to the low button as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that high button, hold control and press D on the script and it will duplicate it. So let's close Visual Studio and you'll notice you do get an error on this one, but don't worry. We're going to modify this so we get rid of that error. Let's rename that high button one script to low button. And Visual Studio keeps opening up when it shouldn't, but never mind. And let's open up low button. Now, we are in low button, but you'll notice that the public class is highlighted. We need to change that name to low. And let's also change deal high card to deal low card and save. Now, technically speaking, we don't really need both of these scripts to exist. The only reason I've done both of these scripts like this is to kind of illustrate how all of this works and how easy it can be to duplicate code rather than retype everything out. So if you want to leave a comment and say you didn't really need that second script, I know, don't worry. It's just to illustrate how quickly and easily code can be replicated and modified to suit any purpose. Anyway, let's apply that to settings and then to the low button. So drag and drop the low button script onto settings. And once again, yes, I know, I know. It's all for illustration purposes. It's up to you whether you want to do it this way or not. You could theoretically apply the high button, but again, depending on what we're doing here, because this is a simple one, it would work if you apply the high button to the low button, or rather high button script to the low button. But if you are going much more advanced, you may need multiple scripts, depending on what you want to do, or multiple methods in one single script, which obviously you can do. So all of these are pretty much applied now. So that will mean that both our high and low buttons will work as intended once we've applied that script to the low button. So you can see how fast I'm doing this now. I think I mentioned it a couple of tutorials ago. Once you get so accustomed to Unity, you can just kind of flow through and get everything done really quick. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to press play and check out my low button and just make sure that works. So deal card, low. There we go. But once again, it does indeed add all the other cards. So we have all of our buttons working now. Uh, next horror, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a sequence to basically say, uh, yes, we've got it right or no, we've got it wrong. And we reset everything to either guess again for high low or reset everything to have another card dealt. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.